Okay, yes. So, uh, ADB is a is an environment which is easy to start with uh, to build uh, and package containers. So it comes with all the dependencies installed like a Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift, Mesos, Marathon, all the infrastructure container orchestration engines installed, and it has all the dependencies installed to uh, build uh, Docker applications and package them as nullicules. And if you might have uh, set up any of these applications, Kubernetes, OpenShift, or Marathon, you might know that it is not a very friendly and easy process. So ADB is there to help you. Like it, it, it is a background box, and you, got, you have to just run one command to set up your environment and start working. Do I have to speak about containers? I think we have heard so much of them. No, uh, please don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so coming to container packaging, right? Uh, so we have got a Docker file. Uh, where we add a few lines and uh, we build like a container image out of that. It seems to be simple, clean, but is it beautiful? Because it depends on the people who make it. And uh, often it's seen that like the way, uh, the, the number of packages you see in the public Docker registry, right? They're too much. For a simple application, you can find like hundreds of images, mainly because like, uh, and most of the images do not have proper documentation. You can get started with it. And every image is tweaked for a particular user's use case. It's not generic. You cannot just download the image and use it in any environment. You need to, and that forces you to make another image out of it and add to the noise. You are forced to make a custom image and push it in Docker Hub for that. It's crazy out there. Just for example, if we like search for the images for MariaDB, Technically, there should be only one which works everywhere, but it's not. Like every community and every organization has their own MariaDB, uh, and most of them might not work, and most of them will be without documentation. And over time, it will just keep on growing because every uh, everyone needs his own MariaDB image. And as a user coming new to the container uh, uh, ecosystem, it's confusing. I just want one. Uh, that's why even we go for the official images, right? But sometimes the official images also do not work. Either they are not tested thoroughly uh, for every release cycle, you'll find issues reported against them. So I want to have confidence when I move to this uh, ecosystem, right? This is a blocker for me as a user. But nonetheless, like confidence are fun uh, because you can like package everything in one thing and ship it. But you. Uh, we are yet to like uh, agree on particular best practices for how we package containers. Let's uh, take an example of a real world application, WordPress. How many of you know about WordPress? Everyone, right? Or everyone might have used it at least. So, uh, if I compare the typical WordPress setup, we have to like download the RPM or dev for WordPress and then configure things. It doesn't work again. We have to configure things and like after a lot of hit and runs, we get it working. Uh, but with containers, is that like WordPress, I need a DB, so I have got my DB uh, uh, container image for that. I run the container, container from that image by specifying the database name, password for, that, uh, uh, for the database. And then I can run my uh, WordPress application by linking it to the uh, MariaDB uh, container that I just booted up. And then I just need to find the port in which my uh, 80 port of my WordPress application is exposed to the host. And once I find out, I hit the browser and I see the WordPress screen, no setup, no configuration, other things I have to do. It's just there, running for me. So it's pretty easy. But here we see that like uh, I have got like two containers coming together to uh, deliver a much richer application. What if we take it to more than two, right? Like we have like a, a like, a lot of containers coming together to deliver a richer application. A typical scenario would be if I'd like to have my entire production app, say an e-commerce website, be on containers. I need databases for it. I need caching, uh, cache servers for it. I need the app and multiple applications, uh, app servers for it. And then finally a load balancer app, right? So, and everything can be containerized and linked together to deliver the entire uh, website on containers. Just for example, we'll look into an example of GitLab. So GitLab uh, is an open source clone of GitHub. It's very famous. Uh, it's used uh, in-house by, by many organizations. 
So on a uh, like superficial level, GitLab depends on GitLab depends on a database, Postgres or MariaDB, whatever it could be, and it depends on a, ca a caching server Redis. And Redis again could be run as in a master slave mode, right? It could have. Uh, it depends on like uh, two other uh, nodes, like one is the master node and, uh, and one is the slave node. Uh, so. Uh, we come to microservices, right? Where like uh, and containers help us shape microservices. Uh, and if we can, uh, uh, but when you deploy containers, uh, the image is the same, right? And if we can r write our images properly so that the, we can separate the metadata of the image and the static image, so we can actually deploy the same image in multiple environments by configuring the metadata according to the environments. And thus, we can actually orchestrate uh, containers in for different environments and. As a result, a bunch of orchestration tools have come out in our ecosystem for orchestrating containers, deploying the same image with different parameters on for different environments. But uh, when it comes to like, so we have got rid of one problem that having a static image which works in different environments, but now we have to ship again and a variable piece of data, which is metadata. And uh, all the orchestration providers have their own definitions of this metadata. None, uh, and none of the metadata from one platform to the other looks the same. They are totally different. For example, like if I have to deploy it on Kubernetes, I have to download their template format which contains the metadata, and I have to deploy it on my Kubernetes server. So we have got like uh, or uh, container orchestration in just like OpenShift, Flame, Compose, Mesos, plus Marathon, Kubernetes, Doku, Terraform, uh, Shutted, Helios, uh, so many, and, and more are yet to come. And yet we do not have a particular leader in the market space of like uh, cont uh, container orchestration engines, but everyone has uh, taken their independence to invent a new templating language, which makes it more confusing for users. As a developer, why should I even bother with their language? I just need to get my application into production. It is not uh, that easy. So how the metadata can change across various environments, right? So like. Uh, for example, uh, I have got multiple environments for my application, right? It could be staging, test, it could be production, right? So, for example, if I take the metadata for a MySQL or like PostgreSQL, whatever, so I might need to run it on different IPs. I might, to ne I might need to run it on different ports if all the environments are on the same host. And I might need to have different credentials for that. And I need to be able to configure that on the fly. And if we look into the uh, example of uh, Guestbook uh, Go app, which is a sample multi-container application that Kubernetes uh, showcases a demo with, it's not terse. It's like uh, 725 lines long. So that's not a quick start guide for you. Uh, you have to go through all of that to get started. So here we are introducing Nullicule. So Nullicule is a spec for building and packaging multi-container applications. It's, it's basically, basically a pattern uh, that, uh, that uh, guides you to build multi-container applications and shape them. It encourages composability of uh, applications. So basically, you can compose a Nullicule application out of, out of multiple smaller Nullicule applications. So the uh, benefit is that once you package an application as Nullicule, you just forget about that thing. Once you have packaged a DB properly, you don't ever need to do it again. You just consume it. So that's where uh, like Nullicule increases uh, composability, and it is also like uh, orchestration platform agnostic. So Nullicule works as it is. It has one common language, and it works as it is for different orchestration platforms like OpenShift. Mara it works on Marathon. It works on Kubernetes. It works on Docker. And we have got a uh, pluggable provider model, which allows you to uh, hook a, any provider you want. We, we have an API, you write your module and you can get support for your own provider. So you talk in the same language in the world of Nullicule. You don't uh, bother about like other, like the native uh, temp artifact languages for the different providers. So it's a spec, it's open, it's like a container engine uh, agnostic and <coughs> it, it encourages orchestration uh, and it lets you like uh, parameterize your parameter parameterize your deployments based on uh, the different environments you're deploying it to. So why did we uh, like start with uh, building another tool? Because uh, the time we started working on it, there were no 
tools uh, as uh, uh, like it, which were like totally provider agnostic or orchestration tool agnostic. They uh, uh, so we had the need to actually work on such a tool, but uh, now currently I think uh, Ansible Container is doing something similar, which is kind of like orchestration provider agnostic, which just came lately, right? Th that's what I know of. Uh, but uh, last year there's there are no such tools, and as a developer. When I want to define my application architecture, right, I want to be able to do it in a much high level, right? I want to say that okay, this is the application. Uh, application. Uh, this depends on a DB. This depends on the cache, and just deploy it, right? Uh, but again, when I talk about high level definition, you don't want to lose the power of doing low level tweaks. So, uh, Nurikul is something which gives you a high level overview of your entire application architecture, but it does not compromise on you customizing the low level bits if needed, and it's uh, and uh, since it's it's kind of like high level, it's very easy for a junior DevOps or sysadmin engineer to actually take Nulika and deploy it to production without uh, being in the fear of like breaking something unknowingly. And it integrates with other tools, as in I say that it integrates easily with other orchestration providers. So you can easily write modules to add support for your orchestration provider. Maybe it like a, uh, like a Marathon. We already have support for Marathon communities. Maybe some X. Uh, orchestration platform which might come in the future and and uh, the spec is open and the implementation for that is also open uh, so it's open source so anyone can look into and like improve it and like customize it as needed so Nullicle is implemented as a directed acyclic graph so that we can actually uh, like have the dependency among the application uh, components uh, laid out properly for example the guestbook would depend on uh, a Redis uh, and the Redis master itself depends on two Redis slaves. So uh, we define an application as a like uh, like a, as a graph, and uh, so that the dependency is like self-evident from the definition itself. And uh, we manage dependencies as in like when you like <coughs> when you install in a Nulika application, if the dependencies they are not in your system, the engine itself uh, takes care of pulling all the dependencies and just running the thing. You don't need to bother like whether you have the dependencies prefetched. So uh, it takes care of the dependencies for you as well. And as I said, like when you deploy uh, into different environments, we need to be able to configure the metadata, right? And we support uh, parameterizing the metadata. So based on uh, the environment, we can customize uh, uh, the environment variables, you can say something like that, to actually uh, say uh, what data to use to actually deploy it. For example, when I'm defining here a Hello Apache app, right, uh, I can actually, uh, I have defined certain parameters under the, uh, the key params. One is the image, which says what image to use to run the HTTPD app. Here I'm setting a default for that, like CentOS HTTPD. And this could be overridden as well. And also I'm mentioning uh, the host port, uh, the port on the host, on which to bind the AT port of the container. For example, if I'm running multiple instances of it on the same machine, right? I cannot do that. I cannot bind every uh, AT port of the container to the AT port, right? So based on that situation, I can customize it to actually like bind it to any random port. Uh, and also, all these uh, like uh, so all the uh, nodes in the graph they have their own parameters and also the way I can put certain restrictions on the parameters as well by if you see that uh, on the constraints uh, in the uh, section post port so I have added a constraint which adds a regex that port uh, num uh, ports can only be numbers of this pattern so if you try to enter a wrong value it will not accept Wait, are we really using regexes for constraints we can do but most of yeah. us don't, but we can. It is a feature that uh, that yeah. allows it to be done, but like people just skip that. And also, the defaults are for just for user friendliness. <coughs> Sometimes when you're like when you know that you're going to run uh, the Apache uh, server on 80 port, you don't want to configure that. That's why the defaults are there. That allows you to override the values if needed, but you can just proceed with the defaults if you're like if you know that your environment will allow it. <coughs> and with the Param section will define that what data my uh, application or Nullicule needs to be instantiated, right? What what data do I need to run? 
and answers file, as the name suggests, is an answer to the questions that are raised in the params, like what data do I need? And answers file could be in any format, it could be in JSON format, it could be in YAML format. It's just a like uh, kind of like a hash of ha uh, a hash where you have got sections, and the section if I would go to the previous spec definition, it's like uh, the, one of the node names, right? Hello Apache. So there's a section for Hello Apache uh, inside the answers. Yeah, go ahead. Does this also translate into like an OpenShift uh, quick start template? I don't get you. Sorry. Could you repeat? Does this translate well into like an OpenShift template? Welcome uh, that in a bit. Yeah. Uh, so, so here we have got various sections in an answers file where we can uh, uh, pass the data which you want to override. We can either supply data for the params or we can override the default variables. Uh, for example, like here I'm using the default. So I had used CentOS HTTPD as the default value. So it doesn't make much sense. Even if I don't give that, it will just pick up CentOS HTTPD. But if I want to run this uh, on, on say, on a HTTPD container based out of Fedora, I can do this. I can even override the port in which the, my container gets bound in the host. So I can configure, tweak my answers file to match various of my environment requirements and specifications. Also, the Nullicle specification has a room for various providers. Providers as in like Kubernetes, Docker, OpenShift. And I've got artifact files. Uh, so uh, this points to the artifact files as in like Kubernetes templates or OpenShift templates or like Docker commands, right? So uh, the thing in Nullicle is that it's kind of pretty much explicit, nothing is magic. So the, uh, the question that you asked that, does it generate to an artifact file for template for OpenShift or Kubernetes? It does not. You have to do one-time effort. You have to write the templates with uh, uh, which can be configured. I'll just uh, show this. So even the templates which you talk about, like templates are the artifacts that gets deployed in the orchestration platforms. Like uh, we have got templates for Kubernetes and OpenShift. We have got different kinds of files for Marathon. We have got uh, Docker commands, which is one liner, right? So we can have placeholders in the template, like a dollar image, right, which gets populated from the values we supplied in the answers data, right? So we can uh, create dynamic artifact files from the templates that we put. But yes, you have to create the templates manually as in, uh, when in scope Nullicule, we wanted that it is, it should not be magic. It should not do too much magical stuff. It should be explicit and you are in full control of what you do. So. Uh, you have to write the template once, but once you ship it uh, for different uh, providers, you don't need to tweak apart from the, anything but the answers file. So it's kind of explicit, and that was one of the design decisions that it took, so that we can keep the tooling lean and simple, not magical. And because with magic comes like a lot of uncertainty and like things go wrong, and you don't know what has happened. Here, all you just render the templates with the data we provide and deploy it. It's as simple as that. So coming to Atomic App, so Nullicule is a specification. It doesn't do anything. It just says how you package your uh, multi-container applications and ship it. But we need something to run it, right? So Atomic App is a reference implementation of Nullicule, which uh, installs, runs, and manages the lifecycle of a Nullicule app on a particular orchestrator. So you can fetch Nullicule uh, applications with Atomic App. You can run it. You can stop it on the provider. Uh, and yeah. And you can also you also use Atomic App to build images for Nullicool images. So one of the uh, decisions that it took for building Nullicool images uh, was that like the Nullicool image should be standalone. So the image should uh, should contain the code that is necessary to run and deploy the thing. So you don't need to install anything apart from Docker on a machine to actually run uh, uh, Nullicool uh, images. Yes, you do need the Atomic host and the Atomic CLI command. So uh, the container, so whenever we make the a Nullicule image, we base it from the Atomic app image, which contains the source code uh, for a particular version of Atomic app. And uh, it contains certain metadata definition. And then we add the metadata files, like the Nullicule Docker file and the artifact files inside the, uh, inside the container during the build process. So it is standalone. It contains the code that needs uh, to be done to actually manage these application itself. So we have chosen the container format and the mechanism system to actually deliver nullicule images. 
So no other uh, new delivery pipeline. So we use Docker builds uh, and Docker automated build service to deliver it as containers. So we'll try to look into some demos that will things uh, make things much more clear. Uh, yeah. So the most of the demos are made by Tomas, uh, my colleague, uh, and yeah. I need to share my terminal. Okay. The seat for the hand and things are. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, so I'm on an empty directory. So uh, I'll uh, show you various methods to actually uh, run a NoLQL uh, NoLQL application. So I'll take uh, the example of WordPress NoLQL application, which consists of a database and the WordPress application uh, a container. Uh, so I have got the. Atomic CLI with me. Yep. So all I need to do is so let me try to run the WordPress app on Docker. So all I need to do is sudo atomic uh, install. It's very difficult to type like this. Atomic still misspelled. Word. Is correct? No, no, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Uh, yeah. Oh no. I just need to run this. Yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, mm. Ah, so uh, I have no data with me right now. So uh, Atomic App is designed in such a way that for the missing data, it will ask me for data. This is not for deployments, just for like getting sure. started with it. So I'll just enter some random values with this, like I'll just enter this. Is it a uh, did run or is it a trace back? Yeah. Yep. It's probably telling you your database password is invalid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see. I, <laughs> I think I'll I'll just do, uh, I'll set it up as a cloning. Uh, uh, clone my screen. That's better. I'm gonna keep changing this. Is it visible or do I need to increase the font size? That's good. Oh, yeah. oh I forgot one parameter. Provider Docker. So it says that my application now resides in a directory which is uh, generated on the fly via lib atomic app project atomic wordpress and also seven atomic app and then a random number uh, and yeah so that is the directory where my the state of my application lives so let me do a docker ps and yeah this is lot i'll just create it with atomic yeah yeah, so I see that uh, my WordPress container and uh, MyDB Atomic uh, container is running. Uh, I see that uh, uh, the WordPress application is running in port 8888. So I can try to hit my browser, localhost, yeah. And yes, WordPress is running. I just need to configure the language and then enter the form. And yeah, I'll be set up with WordPress. But th that's on Docker, which is pretty kind of like simple. So I'll just uh, kill my application right now. 
so I have started my deployment application. I'll now undeploy my application. Wait. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to now roll back? Yep. Yeah. So I'll just mention the state, uh, uh, the, st uh, the folder in which my state of the application resides. <coughs> so I'll do again sudo atomic. Uh, run the image name. So it, it, it says that it's stopping the images one by one, it will do that. Um, some time yep it's taking a lot of time for docker right it shouldn't take that much time for docker right? It's, it has undeployed the container applications from my Docker uh, Docker engine, and so if I do a uh, Docker ps grip grip atomic, uh, yeah, it's been successful successful undeployed. So uh, now I, I'll try to do the same on a marathon provider, message marathon provider, and for that I am using uh, our ADB marathon box. Which has already pre-set up with marathon, so I don't need to set up marathon. I'll do a just. I've already done vagrant up, so I'll do a vagrant SSH to log into my marathon box, and let me switch to a folder for demo. Yep. So I I'll just remove the WordPress folder from there. I need to use sudo. Uh, let me use atomic app to fetch the uh, so this time i'll be doing an unmonitored deployment so that i don't need to enter in value manually i'll be using the answers file to deploy it automatically that's how to do it in production uh, so i'll be first uh, fetching the image uh, for this i'll be doing uh, atomic run project at atomic uh, wordpress center 7 atomic app and I'll be running it in a mode of fetch and I'll be giving the destination as <coughs> a local WordPress directory yeah it, it just uh, downloaded the image and extracted it in the local WordPress directory so I'll see it into that directory uh, here I see that it contains an answers.conf.sample file so that's a pre-populated file with all the parameters that the WordPress application needs but it is, uh, if I just do a cat of it, uh, so most of the values are none, which I'll set it right now, and then uh, try to start the WordPress container on Marathon. Sudo uh, pem answers. Oh, oh, so first uh, I'll be copying it to answers.conf, because answers.conf is the default file that is read, not the sample file. So I, I have just copied it into answers.conf. I don't have. Uh, Vim on this machine, uh, so yeah. So let me show some easy values first, or, and then I can use the word WP for the name of the database and user let be WP and 172 I'm switching uh, to an uh, absolute uh, uh, IP address because uh, I do not have. Uh, uh, like a DNS setup on my marathon setup, so just I'm using the absolute Docker bridges address for that. And host port 880, I'll use the password as password again. I'll use the send off MariaDB image, and username is WP again, and DB name is WP, and I will set up the provider as marathon. Seems to be good. Uh, so let me try to run sudo atomic. Uh, run WordPress 
Instagram Technique Channel Group Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it says that it has deployed this application and I have now did the run and uh, uh, run in the current directory so that's why I gave dot after that so that I have got the state preserved in the current directory rather than a random directory un under valley Batman gap. Uh, uh, so let's see the marathon UI. Mm. Okay. Oh, it says that uh, MariaDB and WordPress uh, apps are running now and it has given me an ip so let me click it and see what it is there yeah so wordpress is now running on marathon is in the same new little application and i can do and uh, do the setup but i'm not going to this uh yeah so now let me undeploy it so i'll do uh, run of this image using a mode stop and dot for the current folder and it will undeploy it and if I go to the marathon UI yeah so yeah it has undeployed all the things so I do not see my container running here anymore so now it's time for Kubernetes so there is uh, another way to run uh, so till this time I was using Atomic CLI to run Atomic app so Atomic CLI uh, uses uh, so we have I say that we are we have a reference implementation of Nodecule that is called Atomic App, which is a code that runs and manages a Nodecule application, and Atomic CLI indirectly calls that code to run it from the image. So we can also, if we want to access the cool features that we're developing day by day every day, so we I personally use Atomic App because that's the latest code and it takes time, some time for it to to be built and go to Atomic CLI. So uh, I'll show you how to use Atomic App commands directly. Uh, yep, it's there. Uh, okay, I'm on the demo. It has got nothing. So, so uh, the commands that I showed you earlier, right? Uh, so here, uh, so Atomic App supports a lot of other commands than the command supported in Atomic CLI. So that's why we have got an option called like mode. Where we, I specify fetch sometime, I specify run sometime, I specify stop sometime. Uh, but in Atomic App, these are like the first level entities for my command line. So I can directly fetch as I'll do right now. WordPress Atomic App and destination as WordPress. Yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, I have to run it with sudo. Yeah. So I don't need Atomic CLI to access Atomic App. I can do that using Atomic App command directly. So I'll see it into WordPress. Uh, again, I'll do the same thing. Uh, sudo cp answer, copy answers.com sample file to answers.conf and I'll go and edit it pianswers.conf and I'll just again use some sample values here I don't need to override the MariaDB thing because uh, Kubernetes comes with a service uh, thing is which can actually map to IPs uh, WP. Yeah. and by default the provider I'm specifying the provider to be Kubernetes and so if I'll just check Kubernetes if it's running something. No, Kubernetes has no ports running on, on it or no services as well. Oh, there's a Kubernetes service running. So uh, and yeah. So I'll do sudo atomic app run dot sudo. Yeah. So it says that it has done the deployment. So I'll watch kubectl uh, get ports. Yeah, they already came up. Wow, this did not come so fast yesterday. Uh, can, you, can you specify which projects it launches the application into? I couldn't get you. Like, can, can you specify which projects? Uh, the namespace. Yeah, since uh, since it is the like we use the raw uh, like template files for Kubernetes, you can do literally anything. And we can define the namespaces which get uh, deployed to. Yeah. 
So here, uh, the namespace is by default is default that we can override it. Uh, so let me have a look into the service. Uh, give CTL get services. I see that it is running on the WordPress. I can access on this thing. Let me try to go and find it out. Uh -huh. So WordPress is running on Kubernetes now. I can now do an sudo atomic app uh, stop dot and it will undeploy and if I go to keep get services the services have been taken down and the ports also have been taken down it's uh, my DB port, uh, port is like terminating right now it should be gone in time now it's terminating Uh, it will terminate. Uh, that's that's a that's a Kubernetes thing. Uh, I'd like to uh, showcase one of the uh, new features that I have worked on. So, so we have got now atomic images, right? And it has been pushed to uh, GitHub. So we need a way to actually list the atomic index, as in like an index for atomic index, where you can go and look up what applications run on which providers, and from uh, you know the name which you have to image you have to download to run the uh, and consume the numerical application right uh, so we have ha we have a command called uh, index uh, uh, am i using which version okay. uh, oh i'm using an updated version which is released uh, i'll go to Branch. Okay, check out master. So, uh, there was supposed to be an index command. Was the changes merged or did I try it from? It's latest series. It's uh, latest series, right? Yeah. right. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing up. I tried that yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah it's there now. Uh, So uh, we have got a command called list, which uh, uh, points to the upstream Nullicool library repository, and it lists down the Nullicool uh, uh, kind of images that are uploaded there. So I'll uh, it is, uh, yeah, this is the repository uh, which contains all the Nullicool images that we, have, we officially support. And it fetches from that repository. But uh, if I want, I can generate my own index myself. Uh, so uh, all I need to go to a local Nullicool uh, 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 library repository or something similar to that. So I have gone to my local Nullicool library and I can run atomic app index uh, generate. Oh, and the location, yeah. So and it will be generating and updating the index file from this repository. So if you have your own index repository, you can build your index yourself on your machine. So if I run atomic app index list again, so it will be showing the uh, things from this repository, which uh, in my laptop both are the same. But yeah, it shows the different providers that the, a particular image supports, like D for Docker, O for OpenShift, K for Kubernetes, and M for Marathon. And it also tells you the uh, image uh, uh, image name to actually pull from the, the Docker public registry. 
So these are the information that are available from this uh, index command. So uh, the point, uh, the point that we have mentioned, right, uh, regarding like generating the templates, right. So we do not want to make uh, <coughs> academic app complicated or too bloated, as in making it do a lot of stuff which then makes things complicated and then then a lot of parts are in the process. So we want to keep it keep it clean and simple, but we are considering the option of automatically generating the artifact files for different providers based on a common language. Something similar to say, like we have got Docker Compose, right? Something similar, but not exactly Docker Compose. Uh, we are thinking in the lines that there should be an easier way to get into this uh, orchestration platforms. Because given the learning curve of Kubernetes marathon, everything is totally different, like diametrically opposite to each other. And then you learn Kubernetes and then find that Kubernetes is not the tool for you. You learn marathon and then you realize that, that marathon is not the tool for you. So there should be some high level uh, template definition which tells how to deploy a multi-container application, <coughs> irrespective of the uh, uh, orchestration providers, irrespective of marathon, irrespective of communities. Simple to write and simple to understand and simple to read as well. Uh, so we are thinking on those lines, something which uh, takes a uh, like universal format and generates the artifact files for you, and then finally ship it using Nodigo. Because uh, it does what it does quite well, it's simple. Uh, but we want to like uh, embrace Unix philosophies. Uh, small is beautiful. Clump small things together and like make it work and deliver a bigger story. So that's what we are exploring. And yeah, that ends my presentation. So these are some of the links that we have our project website at projectatomic.io, and those are the <laughs> links for our repository on GitHub: projectatomic slash nullicool and projectatomic slash atomic app. And you can reach us to us on a mailing list at container hyphen tools at redhat.com. So anyone, any, uh, do you have any question regarding, we can discuss uh, regarding the spec, do we, uh, yep. So one of the big problems with actually constructing a generic spec is that for very basic functionality, it's possible to actually have sort of universal high level language. Mm -hmm. But once we get into things like mapping ports, mm -hmm. um, storage, mm -hmm. other areas where the different orchestration frameworks differ radically from each other, yep. um, it seems a little bit more challenging to it actually is. come up with a generic approach for that than, and within the existing rule of spec mm -hmm. that's, you know, an issue <laughs> that is unresolved. Um, that is. Any, any thoughts on what that would look like? Um, in, in the future? Uh, the challenges uh, in this space is that the underlying technologies are so different and they are moving so fast, it's very difficult to like level the surface and like build a common spec. But even if you do that, so the way I see it is that uh, when you talk about uh, from a developer, so we are targeting the de developers, right? It's like zero beta entry for developers to deploy the containers on production without learning anything so deep. So wh when I talk about developers, right, I don't want to be bothered with which ports do I expose my service to, or like what networks do I, as example in Docker Compose, we can specify which networks my container joins, but as a developer, why do you care? Choosing networks and choosing all these port layers and all, this is a job of the right. IT, right? As a developer, I don't need to do that. Yeah, but I mean like right now, the way the Atomic App works is we just don't handle that at all. Mm -hmm. um, that gets booted to writing a bunch of shell scripts that no longer the provider director, mm -hmm. which is not really a solution. It's not um, a solution, but with the so what we're uh, we're targeting is that we, we we want to target that developer audience so that like it's a, it's a spec that is very easy to describe and it's very high level without giving you the details of the platform level details, mm -hmm. right? You define everything in an abstract way. For example, like networking in Docker, right? It's a way to actually isolate applications. But how you isolate applications is totally an IT decision, right? Infrastructure decision. You can isolate applications either by uh, doing uh, putting firewall rules or you can create private networks to isolate them. But it's totally an infrastructure decision. A developer should not bother. Rather, what should be specifying is that, okay, I have got an application A and it depends on application B. So I need to access application B and that application doesn't need to depend on, for example, a DB doesn't need to know about the application, right? 
So if if it tries to uh, access the application is something wrong, right? So you define in a high level way what are your dependencies, right? And let the tool, tooling underneath it figure out what's best, or the ops guys to decide how to uh, achieve that level of isolation. So uh, we are planning to come. Uh, we are like actually discussing right now on those kind of uh, issues that how we can like. Uh, Define applications in a developer's language uh, without uh, like separate the platform level details and the high level archi uh, like architecture specification. So it will take some time because, uh, as I said, all the tooling uh, tools are totally different, and we have to get people on board when we are talking about such a thing. Because if we just do it inside our organization, it's not going to make sense. We have to get everyone on board. Uh, and like yeah, and leveling the surface, like Mesos Marathon is totally different from Kubernetes. It's, it's totally a different take on how you deploy uh, things, right? So leveling the surface is difficult and again, if you, even if you level, the goals are all moving fast. We will always keep on chasing them. It's not like when the live word came up for the virtualization world, when things had settled. Uh, they knew uh, like what to do and like things were not moving that fast but now in the container ecosystem things are moving so fast that uh, even if you keep leveling you'll keep on running with the bulldozer and keeping keep on leveling the road all the way so but still uh, such a tool is necessary uh, I have spoken to a lot of DevOps and developers they feel the need of such a tool because uh, I've met a lot of people who try a platform and they invest a lot of time and energy in doing things in their platform to realize at a later time that it doesn't work for them and yeah and then they don't want to uh, come out of that because I put a, there, there's an investment on the platform right but if you have got such a tool it will let people experiment and choose a proper tool which suits their purpose uh, does that partially answer your question or like does it not at all I kind of I mean it's not a, I mean the issue is that we need the other piece yeah so what we'll saying, need. is that Having the having this is good, mm -hmm. but we need the other piece so that the ops people can actually deploy with the developers. Yep. Need. Yep. Um, and the other piece is going to be a little more complicated because we're going to need effectively what amounts to a separate driver for each orchestration. Yep. Um, and there's some things that I think we'll never be able to cover. Like I was looking at what it would take to support Kubernetes pet set mm -hmm. in new mm -hmm. and and the first question is, do we actually even want to go there? Um, yeah. Or is that way too complicated? So uh, we are not uh, like still we want to confine ourselves to just being the packaging for a multi-container application. So we don't want to do the magic bits in Oracle. But yes, the tool for doing the magic bits is required, which can generate the artifacts for you. But yeah, that's going to be complicated. But that's the, where the fun is. Like uh, we take the hardship so that like the life of the users becomes simple. So that's what we are heading for. Yeah. What, what about layering? Uh, layering as a layering image bits. Like stacks like. Like uh, diff, diffs from the stack. <coughs> uh, uh, do you mean like composability? Like yeah. Nuricle suppose composability. Uh, as I said, like so, uh, Nuricle works like this. Like you have got a big app, right? It depends on apps A and B, and apps A and B could again be a collection of Nuricles. Sure. So Nuricle, once you package something in a Nuricle, it's it's a black box for you, right? You don't want to look in into inside of what happens. You just consume it. You have got an endpoint. You know that it, it works. The, that's the confidence that Nulke gives you, right? Once you package it, it's a black box for you. It works for you. Yep. So you said um, it's a black box for developers, right? So, uh, or the I'd say that it's a black box for the uh, the consuming Nulke applications. So Nulke application A is consuming B. It doesn't need to know what B is made of. Yes, yes, but uh, you said also that uh, developers don't have to care about infrastructure, right? Yep. So, as a infrastructure, in, me as an infrastructure guy, mm -hmm. uh, ask mm -hmm. who has to back up this? We have to? Who has to back up, uh, for example, that MariaDB? Uh -huh. uh, me as an infra infrastructure guy, don't want to know what developers do there, but yeah. I need to because it's their database. Yeah. And, uh, Developers don't want to deal with backups mostly. Yes, and MySQL is not the solution here. I, I don't. Think. Yeah, so th uh, those kind of uh, things we have uh, like we have not attended yet. But I think we need to talk with more people. Actually, this is one of the requirements that you came up, right? So maybe like we need more mind share on this tool so that we can hear to your needs and come up with the tooling that is necessary for this kind of issues. 
currently it's not we don't have a direct solution for that in Nudicle you can do that you can have uh, like because at the end you can write Kubernetes templates and all stuff right you can run, run something there which gives some backing up uh, your databases time to time but like nothing it's not a solution that is provided by Nudicle directly but if it is a requirement we might consider we, we'd love to actually look into this and like create a tool that actually solves uh, problems of DevOps and DevOps. You, you are welcome to actually create an issue in Nulicule. I think it's time. The other speakers are waiting, so I'll end up. Thanks. Thank you.